Hello, this is James Cox with Premier Martial Arts in Abilene, Texas, and today we're going to do somewhat of an instructional video with you guys on fighting footwork. So footwork is like the solution to most of the problems in, in combat sports, whether it be boxing, kickboxing, MMA, wrestling, or heck, even street fighting. I mean, footwork is that ability to get in and get out. If you're not able to hit the person, chances are you didn't utilize proper footwork to get inside to close the range and, and the gap to make contact. Or the opposite of that, maybe you're getting hit too much or you didn't utilize footwork properly to pull, to move back, to get at angles, to make the miss and be able to counter. There's a lot of different methods of footwork and I'm gonna show you a variety today. We call this the six different methods of footwork. I kind of think of it like traveling. When you get from point A to point B, you start with the end in mind and it's to get there, right? To get in, to get out. There's different ways to travel, just like in the world. You can go by car, you can go by plane, bicycle, boat, motorcycle, whatever it may be, but you still get there, you still move. And we're gonna have some different ways of movement um, that you could do a lot with and work with. So have fun with this footwork and I'm honored today to have some of our uh, fight team, youth and teenager uh, pancration fighters here with us today. So we have LJ and Kingston and Farron and Josh, Alejandro, Kenzie and Mario, all right? You guys ready for some stuff today? So we're gonna talk about our footwork. Like I just said, this is a lot of the key to the success. Fighting stance, move! Yeah. It starts with hopefully a perfect fighting stance we don't have to go over, right? Hands high, elbows in, tight fist, chin down, more to the side, knees bent, weights on the balls of the feet. I've always used that little acronym MAD, M-A-D. Now that's not for anger, is it? Anger, right? We don't, we're not supposed to be mad. Anger is your enemy. So we want to be able to control our emotions with our breath and be uh, more in control and have composure. But just think of it move, as move, attack, defend. So the word mad, M-A-D, M is for? Move. Yeah, that's what we're going to work on today is our movement. A is for? Attack. Attacking. You got to kick and punch. And D is for? Defend. Defending. And movement can also be a little bit of attacking and defending in ways as well. All right, Brad, step number one is step drag, we typically call it. I would almost kind of change it to step step because I don't really like the drag part. But step drag is your key footwork in fighting. Okay, so from here, guys, if we're moving forward, you want to avoid ever having nose over toes. Try that. Totally wrong, off balance. We would never do that, right guys? So when we move forward, the leg in front is first. If I move exactly three inches here, then I move three inches with my back foot. So it's just step drag or step step. One, two, left, right. Now if we put a tape measure in between us, it's that consistency every time to keep those feet a little more straight. I can roll a big bowling ball right between your feet and keep your level low, okay, so that you kind of drop a level. Elevator went from four to three. You just change your level and sit down heavier, right, guys? So move forward, one, two, one, two. Now I might see your heels come up. That's perfectly fine, but I never should see your toes come up, right? Very bad. So step drag in reverse is the way to pull, to retreat, to get away, to make a miss, but not to be off balance. What you may be able to do with one or two strikes is to lean back and make a miss. But eventually they're going to counter forward and you're going to lose by trying to back up when someone else is going forward. So when you properly step drag back, we're going to pull right left. And I maintain that perfect posture. Ready? Back. Back. Same way to the right is to cut the person off. I see more often when someone moves to the right, the second step becomes bigger. So it's like a little step and a big step. You guys remember back in the day, y'all probably did that? Not anymore though, right? So it's the same, same, one, two, one, two. That's how you sidestep. When you move to your left, sidestep, one, two, one, two. So let me see what we're talking about, guys. If I had Farron in front of me, she's gonna mirror my attack. Obviously, when she comes forward, I go back or the other way around. She goes back, I go forward. If she tries to run, I cut her off. So my hips are in front of her. She goes the other way, I cut her off. So the footwork and the alignment of the hips is key. Thank you, ma'am. So let's see real quick on your step drag movement. Two times, forward, one, two, back, one, two, to the right, to the left. You guys look like experts, just like I had expected. Good job. Movement number two. Method of movement, number two, is rhythm bounce. Now this is a little more aerobic. It's a really quick way of getting in and getting out. Think of playing tag. I got you and then I move, right? So you're light, you're low to the ground. A great side note to this is jump rope. 
jump rope to help get that relaxed rhythm and just float like a butterfly. When both feet move at the same time, forward and back, you're right where you started. So you, in essence, are getting in and getting out, but you're light on the feet. Let's try rhythm bounce in place. One, two, one, two. Again, looking good. Hands up, tight fist, elbows in, chin down. Turn to the side, knees bent. Perfect. Now there's a little secret break and rhythm bouncing and pressing forward or pulling back or going to angles or circles. What happens here is that you do take a slightly bigger step on the second time. I call this pressing the press. What is it? Press yeah, man, you got to press forward. And it's not always easy when people are trying to kick you, punch you, and take you down, right? So you have to gradually, just inch by inch as a cinch, press forward. So it's little step, big step. It's almost like an illusion. How did I get forward? Press the press. Ready, rhythm bounce forward. Nice job, guys. Break the same way going backwards without making that mistake of head over heels. You take a small step and a bigger step. You're low to the ground, rhythm bounce back. Same concept, break when you go side to side. So go ahead and go back to your spots, get in that amazing looking fighting stance, maximize balance, minimize targets. When we rhythm bounce to the side, see, I would still stay on this line but I go in and out to the right. Let me see. And the same to the left. So that's the method number two of your footwork rhythm bounce. Let me see, rhythm bounce in place. Press forward. Pull back. Cut off to your right. Cut off to your left. Good job. Back to your spots, guys. All right. Method number three and four are going to be a little bit more simple, and they could actually honestly be one method, but I just separate them. And this is how you cut a corner. You get to an angle. There's too much of fighting that is straight line, right? So to make someone miss, you can move a little bit. The advantage there is you can still hit them. You can make someone miss and move a lot, but the disadvantage there is you can't hit them back right? So the saying, make them miss, make them pay. So you're able to counter pretty good with short, quick angle movements. The risk is maybe not knowing exactly what's coming at you. Goes back to your best defense is having the hands up, all right? So when you angle out, we're going to go to a very slight turn towards this corner to my right. I'm literally throwing my shoulder, hip, and heel, and I'm cutting right here. And I just reset my stance to a corner. So whatever is coming forward at me, look, a straight punch, a straight kick, a weak takedown attempt. Just move, and then you can still counter, just like that. Small, less is best when it comes to defense. Little. So we call this angle and out. You know, in karate, how we do an inward block, you're not necessarily doing that, but it's that throwing motion of, here's where you reset, to the corner. So let's go together, team. Ready, and angle out. Now, I would definitely pepper a couple of jabs. What's better than one jab? Two, a double jab, but they're both meaningful, not little rabbit punches, but pop, pop. So ready, reset, angle out, and double jab. Move, again, ready. Move, again, ready. Move, nice. So Mr. LJ sees a straight cross coming at him. He just angles out, makes me miss, and he can counter. He sees a straight kick come at him, angles out. He sees a weak takedown. Angles out. If you don't want to get hit, don't be there. Pretty simple philosophy. All right. That's not number three. All right. Method number four is angle in. A little bit more complicated fighting stance, but we're going to the inside corner. Okay. So my right foot's going to take half a step. We never ever really want to put our feet together. There's such things as switches and angles, but we're going to do half a step in and out. And now we face this corner. Not a quarter turn to the wall, but to the 45 degree angle. Ready, reset, hands and elbows, you protect yourself with your chin and shoulders and level low. Angle in, right leg makes this V and stop, go back. It reminds me of traditional karate from your front stances, but we're not necessarily doing it that deep. Okay, hands up and angle in, boom. And why not go back to quick double jab counter? <laughs> Meaningful pops, ready, hands up. And let me see you guys, angle in, 
Reset. Ready. Angle in. Reset. Nice job. Both hands up. And this would be the same three good defenses of something coming straight towards you from the rear side. And we're both conventional with our right-handed back. I don't want to confuse you. But the point again is, if you don't want to get hit, don't be there. So even if I was throwing a good jab at Mr. Kingston, he angles in to make me miss, and he can counter. Or a good lead kick, he angles in. Or again, I'll go off a weak attempt for a takedown. Make sense, guys? Yes, sir, sir. All right. Fighting stance. So let's move on. That was three and four, pretty simple. Angle out, angle in. Method number five, we get a little bit more complicated with uh, feeds from a lot of boxing and rolling with the punches, but I like to call it duck walk. Quack, quack. Duck walk. Hands and elbows back to that stance. Duck walk, once again, is getting away, but still having posture so you can support that base and you can be able to counter and come back. So a duck walk is a little bit of action happening with the bend of this knee and this shoulder, and you're rolling with the punch. This is more so effective with a bigger glove versus a straight punch with, with on the street with no glove. But you're still somewhat kind of almost rolling with it. It's going to just barely uh, uh, graze you from your shoulder even to the top of your head as you shell because the power is at the end of the punch. Do you guys understand? The power is here. But what if I roll with it and I step back? Now I went to my opposite stance. No big deal. So that would be like half of a duck walk. Boom, right here. If we want to do the second step, now it's here. And you're right back, ready to counter. That's a great time for your blitz to come back. And I call the blitz the one, two, one, two. So let's go to method number five of footwork, guys, fighting stance. And it's called duck walk. So with me, left foot, one. Right foot, two. And probably one, two, one, two, blitz in for your counter. Like a slingshot, pull back, boom, and then shoot forward. Ready, fighting stance. Duck walk, one, two, maybe blitz coming back. Ready, and duck walk, one, two, blitz coming back. Good job. Mr. Alejandro comes up here. He sees the defense. His, his best reaction is to duck walk out of it as I throw straight punches. One, two, and then the counter here is to blitz in. Duck walk out. Very good, sir. Back to your line. Guys looking good, and we are on number six. Last but not least, the final method of footwork today. Now, would you put all these together like in a fight? Probably not, but we can talk a little bit maybe about how one method counters best another method, you know? If you were coming straight at me, I should just angle out, you know, right? If you're rhythm bouncing, I'm probably gonna step drag. And they can kind of go on with some strategy there, but not to confuse you, last but not least, Footwork method number six is a back pedal. It's almost like that exercise we do here all the time, but not quite so much scooping. So from your fighting stance, the lead leg is closest. So probably a little bit more risk of a low kick hitting you, even a single leg getting snatched. So we're going to back pedal like a scoop. One, two. And you're right back to your original stance with the right foot back. A little bit smoother what's happening and you're here. Could you backpedal more than two? Sure, sure. I would just be careful about backing up too much. What is our rule, guys? Backing up more than two steps is already a problem. But however you would retreat back, more than two steps, you should either decide to shoot forward or to hit an angle or in corner. All right? If you're backing up more than two steps, you're probably running scared. Not to mention, you can't see what's behind you, and you run into a ring, a cage, a car door, a wall, right? So let's look at our back pedaling. Hands up, ready, and we'll go one, two, and we're right back to there. And back pedal. I like this off a counter to a leg kick. If I was trying to maybe do a calf or low light line leg kick to Mr. LJ, his lead leg scoops one, two, and he's out of the way. Make sense? Again, guys, ready, fighting stance, back pedal. Excellent. Again, ready and back pedal. Ooh, back to our spots. Feet together set. Quickly, like pros. Ready. Courtesy and respect. Bow. Fighting stance. Move. Yeah. Giving 100%. Method number one. Step drag. Forward. Back. Right. Left. Good. We'll go back to your spot and rhythm bounce in place. 
Press the press forward. Back. To the right. To the left. Back to your place. Number three. Fighting stance. Angle out. Pepper double jab. Good. Again. Angle out. Counter. Good. Go back. Number four. Angle in. Pepper that jab. Keep that right hand high and tight. Ready. Angle in. I like it. And number five, duck walk. Roll with the punch. Again, and I like the one, two, one, two. Come back, counter. Ready? And number five, duck walk. Add your blitz. Nice. Last but not least, back pedal. Ready? Scoop, scoop. Go. Pow, pow. Back to your fight. Ready? And go. Nice. Feet together, set. So what we're going to do is my side is first. And we're going to pick any method of movement, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we might change them up. But I'm leading, I'll move first, and he'll move second. And he's going to pick any method of movement, one, two, three, four, five, six. Throughout it, don't be crazy with it, but try to maybe show all six methods, all right? So we're leading, they're following, and then I'll tell you when to switch. Kind of makes sense? So don't worry necessarily as much about what you do, but look good how you do it. Ready, bow. Fighting stance. Okay, in action. I'm moving first. One, two, three, go. And switch. Let the other person lead. It just adds a different dynamic. So you're leading first. And that concludes this uh, instructional video of your six methods of footwork. Footwork is very important. Again, solution to a lot of problems, how you get in, how you get out, and all those good things like that. Keep in mind the basics are always the most important, and it's not really what you do, but it's how you do it. Correct details go a long ways. You guys stay with our YouTube channel, James Cox Martial Arts. Thank you very much. Everyone bow to the audience.